everybody, this is Darren Van Dam, and you are listening to the Flick Connection Podcast, episode 40. Ho, ho. Nice round number. Congratulations. Got Joe in the studio with me. Joe, are we doing last names, or are we going to yeah, call, or are we gonna call you Jaws Joe? Let's just call me Jaws Joe. <laughs> so, for a small handful of you that watch on YouTube, you may have seen, you may recognize Joe. Oh. And you may recognize uh, this uh, W.L. Weller <laughs> that we're drinking as well. Uh, Last time Joe was on was uh, about two years ago. Terrible. terrible. It was about two years ago. Uh, Joe and I watched Jaws. And uh, Joe, I think, maybe may have finished a bottle of Weller. <sighs> I think it was open when you got here, but you definitely no, drained it. I put it. down a lot. More and, than I should uh, have. Anyway, the video did not go well, but it is hilarious to watch. I'll put a link to that in the description. So even if you're listening, uh, just you. listening to the podcast. <laughs> Thank you, you for click, being so kind. Yep, yeah, you can click on that link, and uh, there's a blooper reel in that video and everything. Gosh. So um, anyway, that that Joe is welcome back on the podcast. And today, we're going to talk about the top 10 movie shootouts of all time. So if you're new to the show, the format is... We each have six picks. We rotate, introducing them, talking about why we like them, why we think they deserve to be in the top ten. Six and six is 12, which means we have to eliminate one of each other's picks before we work together to rank them, to figure out what order they actually go in. So as we talk about them, there's sort of a general order, but we're, we're saving each of our number one picks for the, the last one. Um, and then we'll sort of work together, and then uh, if we still have time, who knows? I don't know. You going first, um, or am I going first? I'll go first, All just right. to sort of establish uh, kind of what we're doing. And um, let's see. I'll go with a I'll go with a crowd favorite for a first. Uh, one of my picks is Tombstone. Uh, up on the board. Oh man! Solid. And uh, and also, Joe. There's no. I'm just slapping it up there. Up it there. just okay. put it where it fits. But um, the, the OK Corral shootout in Tombstone is probably, just looking around the room at yours and mine, is probably the quickest shootout on the list. But Intense. I'm, it's, Very intense. It's intense. It's, it's true. <laughs> so it's classic. And because they did such a great, because the movie's so good and they did such a great job of like establishing all these characters. Oh, yeah. I'm including, by the way, in the shootout, them walking through the town with the the uh, fire in the back. Like yeah. that, that is part People of rushing in. Yeah, leading up it, to the intense because they're walking into the shootout. So that is a hundred percent part of the shootout. And then again, it's quick. So it's I don't know. I think it probably deserves to make it into the final ten. But I, I I'm gonna guess it's maybe a little lower only because it's so short. But um. We, just a side note about the movie, I, I feel like you and I have talked about it before, because I know you and I have watched this movie together, that the director was like fired halfway through, couldn't finish it, and actually, do you know who the director's son is? I have no idea. The guy that did Mandy. <laughs> wow. So the director of Mandy is the son of the guy that couldn't Mandy. finish Tombstone, but apparently, uh, Kurt Russell, they, like they were just going to scrap the movie. And Kurt Russell continued to like come to work every day and basically like rallied everybody kind of pushed it on to finish it. Yeah, he so he's like the unaccredited director, wow. and he never went on to direct anything. But he di essentially directed half of Tombstone. One of my favorites, by yeah. the way, Tombstone as far as Western yeah. New Age. Well, and he's one of my favorites. Sam Elliott, Kurt is, Russell, all, yeah. crazy crap cast, especially Val Kilmer as uh, Doc Holliday. Yeah. Awesome fellow from Georgia, by the way, Doc Holliday, which is all very cool to have somebody from this region to be in that type of time era to show up. Speaking of Doc Holliday, I think I'm allowed to say this. And if I'm not, there'll be like a weird jump because I, I will have like legally had to edit it out. <laughs> but friend of the show, previous guest, Daniel DeWeldon, actor, is playing Doc Holliday in a new series that kind of revolves around like the women of like the West, but he 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 plays Doc Holliday, and 
I'm I I think I'm going. I'm planning on going to the premiere of the show in California. Oh wow! That's... But I've seen some stuff for it. It's called the Badland Wives. It's either called Badland Wives or the Badland Wives, but it looks good. I'm interested. I like. We'll see what happens with it. But it's kind of cool. Like he he had a cool story on a previous episode where like he uh, auditioned for the role, and uh, in the script he like you know, twirls the gun and puts it back in his holster. And they were like, you don't need to be able to do that. Well, he practiced it a bunch and did it and ended up getting, not, not necessarily because of that, because he's a really good actor, but he ended up getting it. So that that's kind of cool. It'll be cool to see Doc Holliday. It's a younger Doc Holliday, too. It's before, I think, the tuberculosis and before all of the tombstone stuff. Oh, yeah. Uh, where Early he's a practicing night. doctor yeah. in the show. Yeah, yeah, he's pulling bullets out of people and stuff yeah. in the show. So anyway, so that's my pick. Um... You're welcome to just grab right. a random one. Uh, if you feel like that there's a good transition, you can use it. If I'm going to go ahead and go to like a great scene, a great movie and all. And I really, really like the ending shootout. Saving Private Ryan. Phenomenal. The last 35 to 40 minutes, yeah. solid. Just solid action. Gunfight, tanks, explosions. I mean, to me, it's just the perfect type of ending to a movie like that, a war movie. Well, and it's a bunch of stories, too, because you've got, you've got the story with the sniper happening up in the tower. Oh, yeah. You've got the story with the coward who can't kill anybody. You've got the story with the, the guy. Coward. Like, this counts gets, as... Yeah, gets his I mean, best friend or all yeah. his good friends killed. Yeah. As they I mean, accept him. Because even though it's movie. not shooting, the guy slowly getting stabbed, it, oh, like, that, that's part of the shootout. Yeah. You know, that happens, like... I, 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 the weird thing about Saving Private Ryan to me, it, it's just my perception, is that it hasn't really gotten, like, it was definitely recognized when it came out. And it is a great Spielberg movie, but, like, time hasn't really remembered Man, that movie such as a great. Movie. Right. Yeah. Like, as much as it should have. It just it, doesn't. To go off key from the beginning, when they start off, how yeah. it's, like, first person, when they're leaving the boat and going storming the beaches in Normandy, like, Man, it's it's just great film filmography. A little cinematography. Cinematography. There we go. But it's <laughs> like it was at a time. I think Spielberg was just finishing up film school because he went late. Like he went in the '90s after he had made, jo uh, you know, everything. After he made Jurassic Park, yeah. you know, he went to film school. It's such, a, and his style changed. Special effects, the way they filmed it. I mean. It was phenomenal. I really enjoyed the movie all the way through, but to have the end scene, kind yeah. of when they start and they find Private Ryan in the field and he is actually someone that's trying to do something in the war and they kind of look at each other like, well, he's wanting to stay here. Yeah. So that's, uh, I really enjoyed it from that point on. But they, and they kind of build up to it. The guys are telling stories. Oh, yeah. And then the, it, then once it starts, it just goes, man. And so Full throttle. <laughs> the, well, and, and part of what I was saying about, like, it's all these different stories is you never really lose track. You always know they can cut back to the sniper, and you're still, it, oh, there's still continuity, it. Oh, which is yeah. a tricky thing to do, and Spielberg's a genius with that kind of stuff. So so that's why I threw Private Ryan up there. Yeah. Tombstone, by the way, awesome flick. Love it. I yeah, mean, yeah. I mean, I love the movie. Over, it's, I know, overall. Yeah. But and it's got a couple shootouts, of shootouts. But not but, like... Yeah. Yeah. So what do you got next? Um, let's see what I want to go with. Uh, I'm going to go with one... I've got a couple that I know like everybody is going to be waiting to hear if they're on the list. But before those, I'm going to go with one that I know a lot of people haven't seen. And it's it's hard to come by. Like, I, I've had to buy it. Like, you can't. It's never on streaming services. But Hard Boiled is a John Woo movie uh, before he started making uh, movies in America. Uh, it stars Chow Young-Fat as a detective and really and truly, this movie has three incredible shootouts in it. There's one in the beginning where there's like a sting operation in like a tea house. And there's like uh, all these bird cages everywhere. But then uh, there, there, there's just sacks of flour exploding everywhere. And there's a lot of blood, a lot of shooting, a lot of like flourish kind of things like sliding shit across the floor what i will say and i think you might be getting ready to touch on it i don't know how familiar you are with this movie <laughs> a little bit not is much. it's very very unrealistic yeah. uh shooting so it's one of it's not one of i've got a couple that are kind of unrealistic but 
it it makes up for, like like they don't no one ever runs out of bullets. Yeah, no reloading yeah. crazy. Yeah, I mean there's some reloading, but it is not a revolver shooting twenty two rounds. Right, it's yeah. not exactly. Yeah. There's way too many bullets coming <laughs> out of these guns. Um, John Woo's kind of famous for that. He's famous for that. Over the top is great. Though, He's famous action. for really slow mo, and dubs. So dubs, is dubs. He always has dubs flying around yeah. in his movies. Pigeons. I'm gonna have to like pay attention to that. When yeah. Start watching some John. Yeah, movies. like even uh, uh, <laughs> just mi- all over the place dubs. Yeah, even Mission Impossible Two. There's just dubs like for no real good I'm reason. To, like, break, like, yeah, let's see, uh, face off. Face off dubs. All dubs. Over the place. Yep. He Especially went. He he, he he went overboard <laughs> with the dubs <laughs> and face off. All over the place. But Hard Boiled was before those, and the one that I picked because we kind of have to. We're not just saying like. The best movies with a shootout. Yeah. It's got to be a shootout. Even though the Tea House one's great, the there's like a warehouse one that's really... Like, this movie blew me away the first time I saw it because I'm looking at the way it's filmed. Like, there's a shot where a, guy, a car is exploding and it's got sparks and stuff and a stuntman is jumping... The back doors are off at this point or something and he's jumping through it in slow motion as it's exploding... And it's right, in, his body is right just in front like of in the fire. It just, and it's a real guy. There are so many guys that are get engulfed in flames. Bring another one out. Yeah, yeah in this movie. And it looks so That's intense. Good. So there's the warehouse one, but then finally there's one in a hospital. And the reason I picked that one is because there's one really long take in it, which is insane to do with the shootout. Because you've got all this shit breaking, glass breaking, Bullet holes, like the squibs, bullet holes appearing in actors and walls, the trim, all the shit on the tables is exploding as these bullets are flying around. And they could, I don't know how many times they did it. They could really only do it once without having, once in a day. And everything has to be lit. The camera has, so many things have to go right for it to work. And it works really well. And it keeps you in the action. So that's why I really like that one. Hard boiled. Yeah. I'll have to go back and check that one out. No, it's it's yeah. it's badass. That's it's yeah. a good one. I, yeah. You know, it being on the list, you know, it's on on my high list. But all right, I'm gonna go with. Uh, oh man, I really like this. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it out because other western. We'll put it up there next to Tombstone. Open range, in scene, right up to the wagons when they're there. They're talking. They've got their chocolates. They got their cigars. Yeah. And then the whole town, you know, clears the town out waiting for a huge shootout. I mean, two against, what is it, seven or eight people. And it's just an all-out open warfare in the streets. People having to reload. People getting shot, just kind of patiently waiting to shoot back. I mean, to me, it's a great movie as far as the, the whole movie from the beginning to the end. But that shootout scene, compared to some of the other ones on my list, is a great scene and it's long. Yeah, now, the only problem I have with the movie, I don't have any problems with the shootout. The only problem I have with the movie, and it's, it's, it's not necessarily a problem with the movie, it's a personal problem with the movie, is I'm waiting the entire movie for the shootout. <laughs> and the movie is a little slow, it, but... It, dra- it can drag in some It places. makes the shootout pay off. It's a build-up. It's a slow build-up. They don't just, yeah, they don't just introduce the main characters, they introduce the bad guys, too, so you know who everybody is. Like you said they were with the they have their cigars and their chocolates. chocolates. Uh, they're sharing information about each other. Like they they they're but not they planning. Never known for <laughs> yeah yeah, and they're not planning on making it out of the shootout. Like it's great, and it is a good movie. But I just the last time I watched, it, I just remember being like, oh my god, can we just get to this? Because I really just the shootout's so good. I just am like yeah, impatiently well. waiting on the shootout. It's a build-up. It's a slow yeah. build-up. It's yeah. a great movie. If you haven't seen it, I would check it out. Definitely no, I would definitely rec- I think it came out... I want to say it was in college, but it might have been like my first year of college. So, like 2003? Yeah, I was pretty impressed with the shootout. Maybe when this came end, out? Yeah, so, I mean, maybe. It's creeping up on 20 years old. That's crazy. It's it's, But it's great. I, am I wrong? Do you know? Kevin Costner directed this. Did he not? I don't know if he directed this. Man. If he sure. didn't, he definitely produced... I think he did, man. And if he didn't, he was definitely a producer or something. He was a creator on this one. Uh, it's one of the last things that Robert Duvall starred in. There wasn't a supporting actor in that I really... I mean, I guess he was supporting, but he was, yeah. he's in every scene. Majority and, uh, of the time. Yeah, I mean. 
and it's one of the last ones that I remember really liking him in. And I always like him, but I feel like he's as he's gotten older, he's really resigned he himself. Kind of, yeah, sits smaller back. roles. He's not doing a lot of roles. Uh. Uh-uh. He's done a few, I'm sure. I'm sure somebody's seen something. They'll be like, "Well, you're forgetting about these, these, and these." Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I mean, the ones that stand out to me as the last major one, I guess, would be this and then yeah. Low. I think get Low. Called, get Low. There yeah. We go. Get Low. That's on Netflix right now. They just yeah. added it. You know, and I think about stuff like We on the Night, which yeah. is a great one, but that he's was, not really in that much. Just barely. Yeah. 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 Very small, small part. Being well, cool. Father. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna go with one of my more obvious ones, uh, The Matrix. Uh, the lobby shootout, to be specific. Exploding concrete and Just slow-mo camera. <laughs> over the top. I mean, oh. I burned a hole in the DVD <laughs> when I was in high school. I had a PlayStation 2 in my room on probably a 13-inch TV that was deeper than 13 inches <laughs> and uh, would watch it on that. About 50 pounds. Yeah. yeah, and just could not watch uh. this movie enough and absolutely loved it. Because the shootout, I don't know if you remember, it opens with like a close-up on his boots coming through the <laughs> yeah, revolving door. The, the guards uh, ask if... You know, Open up like, his jacket. And, where they're like, Holy keys, shit. loose change, any metal items you have. <laughs> like, they give him the thing, and then he opens it up jacket. with all those guns. Everybody, sh- or at least the guard was shocked. Yeah. And and the, the setup of the movie, like, the concept of the story is the only way you could really facilitate that shot of him doing that and yeah. that type of shootout outside of, like, some weird, like, mass shooting kind of a scenario. And I, it... It's so badass. I really like the end part. There's just a piece of concrete that's just hanging, yep. and it just slowly falls off the wall. Yep. I love how they kept it rolling. Like, that was, I don't know, just concluded. Right as the elevator shuts. Yeah. And, like, even, the, you know, they got the shot where he kind of runs up the wall and flips over. That's cool, but that's not, that could no. be, that could be. Any part of it. They flipping, you could cut that they out. They did kind of the same thing in the second, was it the second movie they did where they, they go to the dominatrix place, and then they're. It's kind of a same type of shootout, but they're running on the ceiling, and they've got the floor they're running on too as well. Kind of the same column basis. Of yeah, it it, it it's almost cool. Like trying to replicate it, but, but well, what I'm the saying first is, one, on the first one, the shootout was so well put together that you, you didn't even have to have that like flourish of a like crazy thing. It's still you know just the I mean just the the. I, do you know? I don't know if you remember even what they're shooting in that. And the shotgun. Oh, he's doing the shotgun. I think they're using a spa. It's a spaz or a spa, whatever. Twelve gauge, and then um, a bunch of machine guns. Yeah, I mean it's just. <laughs> I don't know, it's been so long since I've actually seen it. A lot of these, uh, you know, some of the newer movies I've watched recently, I could probably tell you, but. Yeah, it's it's been a long time since I've seen it too. And speaking of the machine gun fire, one that did not make it onto my list, that. I just couldn't isolate a specific shootout in it that was better than the ones that I wanted to pick. But Black Hawk Down yeah, was yeah. one I struggled with. I'm like, man, can I pick one sequence set? And I'd say maybe the one where they're defending the Black Hawk. Yeah, but, but that's just a piece of it. it, it but, I, but I remember after seeing that movie, I mean, you have like machine gun There's fire. There's a lot of movies out there that are great when it comes to shootouts, but it's majority of the movie yeah. is the shootout that they're in. I know, to pick one from Black Hawk Down is insane. But the, even if you were to pick one, not the movie, as great as the movie is, there's not like a shootout that's so well put together that it stands above any of the ones that we've talked about, which yeah. is why I didn't include it. But I do remember just that machine gun fire, just like you go to sleep that night and you just hear, because <laughs> it's just nonstop with that one. And the, well, just while we're talking about it, a cool thing that they made for uh, Black Hawk Down. It was the first time they did this, where they created this software uh, that allowed them to essentially kind of shoot up the environment like a video game. So they've already filmed everything, but they didn't put little exploding squibs into all these like Moroccan walls. Because they shot it in Morocco. Yeah, edited afterwards. But they, they shot a bunch of shit on like a green screen. Just a bunch of different concretes and stuccos and materials and filmed it all, and programmed, isolated the debris and the bullet hole, and put it into a program that allowed them to literally, like, take a mouse and just go, and shoot it across, so they could kind of paint 
all these bullet trails into the to the walls afterwards and it looks great but they knew they had too too much of that that they couldn't inve- they couldn't act physically put it into the environment it was just going to be too much and they use it all the time now but that was the first movie that they did that it's in. pretty neat they actually had that. i did not know that about black yeah. lockdown it's pretty good. And so that like that would have been after the Matrix. That would have been after most of these actually, except yeah, for the Open Range but, and all that stuff that yeah. they're making. The explosives. Yeah. I mean, God, to do it. And they still do it a lot. Cut. But we got a guy in the scene. Start it over. Like I mean, got to completely change wow. a wardrobe. All yeah. the blood and debris that it makes. You got to completely. You know, <laughs> it does. Consuming money wise. I mean. It does look better though. Yeah. But Black Hawk Down was convincing enough. What do you got next? Oh, I've got. I'm going to throw it up there. My last two, well, I'm going to go ahead and toss this one up. Yeah, I'm going to put the town up here. I really enjoyed the town. There was a bunch, there was a few shootouts in it, but the main shootout at the very end of the yeah. movie, I mean, you just can't beat that. It's, you know, you got Ben Affleck shooting a 308 and just wrecking shop with that thing. You get the AK. I really like the guns they picked over the police. The whole scene itself, from the bank, from the heist, all the way from when they first start walking into the stadium, all the way up to there, and the shootout just brings you a lot of suspense, especially falling out to the street, and you finally get the, the main police officer meeting Jeremy Reiner. I forget his name. Jeremy Renner. Yeah, yeah. Renner. And uh, that just was intense, very intense shootout. I really like that. Well, yeah, they build it up good. Because it's it's right after a heist. Yeah. They're okay. down there. They're in the baseball stadium, which was in. <laughs> I mean, what an epic place to decide to film a shootout. Oh, I like, even as you're watching, you're like, how are they going to get <laughs> out of here? Like, yeah. they're completely trapped and surrounded. And and the thing that bums me out about talking about the town, as I've said it on the channel a few times before, some people get tired of hearing it, but I feel passionately about it. Fucking Ben Affleck needs to quit dicking around. He needs to get his shit together. <laughs> he should be making movies. Yeah. And he's not doing it. He's got another one coming out on Netflix, by the way, I just saw. Yeah, that does look good. It's called I Triple Frontier. Yeah. Comes out in like two weeks. I can't wait to watch it. Mid-May. That, I'm going to do a review on it for sure. Uh, it looks good, uh, but he didn't direct it. I'm saying he needs to yeah. be directing no, movies. No, that, that was great. For yeah. When, he, when that came out, I was shocked. Yeah. I saw it in theaters. I'm like, God, what a good They job didn't even did. bill it. As Ben Affleck directed it, because they wanted people, they thought people wouldn't go see it, because he did a movie with his brother before called Gone Baby Gone yeah. with Morgan Watched Freeman and Ed Harris. Great movie. Yeah. They they, they might have said he directed that, but it was a small movie, like it didn't get a wide release, I don't think. And then, but it was well reviewed, so it did well, probably in, in blockbuster, you know, video. It was still. I was standoffish about Gone Baby Gone when it first came yeah. out. Yeah. My wife was like, yeah, you know, you should check it out. Mm, it's a good movie. It is, it is. After I went back and watched it with her, I was like, wow. That's his I'm first, like, I was first shot as a director, killed it. So with the town, they they marketed it as from the director of Gone Baby Gone. Yeah. They didn't say his name. Now, he's in it, <laughs> yeah. but they didn't, even they with didn't him being like, an actor, they didn't say he directed it. Uh, but to me, it reminded me of like Michael Mann movies. It was just so well put man, together. Man. So awesome. I, you know, in like I still every time it's on, I, you know, I'll have to sit yeah. there and watch it. When like know. Argo's a good movie. Yeah, I like this I one better. Argo. I, I was more on the town. Gone Baby Gone was great. You know, I watched but, Argo because of. Well, um, what I'm saying is like even, I like this movie so much that when I found out he was going to be Batman. I was like, well, that's like that's a big commitment because they put yeah. the movies out fast. It's a lot of work. You got to do all the promo shit. I'm like, God damn it. Yeah. Well, now he's not going to be making fucking movies. But at the same time, I was like, well, if you're a grown man and you get offered to be Batman, you, you have to. I guess. You have I don't to know. do it. I wish he didn't. I wish he was making more movies like this. But you have to do it, which he's out now. He's not gonna do it anymore. Yeah, well, he's got like weird. He's got problems. Like he's something's wrong with him. Maybe he's drinking. Well, yeah, that. But I mean, he's <laughs> drinking. He, no. But even before that, no, he, he's, he's got like of... emotional problems or something. Man, he seems. Like I, I'll be job. honest, man. I didn't watch the Batman. I couldn't do it. I, I watched I just, it. I, 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 I did not like it at all. It, no. it, it. I wanted to see it, but at the same time, like I don't know if I can ruin the Batman that they just did. I'm not a huge fan of Christian Bale. I have to say. 
but you know, having him do the Batman movies. He what do you not job. like about Christian Bale's I, I Batman? I, I just the way he talks. The, yeah, okay, that's everyone's. The, everybody said, you know. Oh my God. You like to shake things up. I like to shake things up too. Now hey, I'll, I'll on, say I'll on. say some of the lines are <laughs> not great. I mentally lines, wrap my head around the voice as part it messes of the me costume. Up just hearing, I yeah. know, but just just hearing Christian Bell trying to make that. Well, so the weird thing about this is the departure. Like, just but whisper, to, just whisper. You don't have to like put something under. Hey. <laughs> well, Batman can't I whisper. I know, but Christian Bale, I just didn't like his voice in Batman. Because I think he's a great pick because he does a good Bruce Wayne. I love this Bruce Wayne. He does a good Bruce Wayne and a good Batman, whereas I could see somebody doing a better Batman, but it's hard to find somebody to do both because they they're so different It was a very well-rounded like, yeah. trilogy they did there. I don't really oh, like it. I, had fun. I, mean, I it fucking loved it like so much. Together I did. And it's not, I'm not saying that I dislike him. I, I mean, he's got some great movies, but... I just didn't like him in that character role as the Batman character. Who's your favorite Batman? Who's my favorite Batman? Yeah. I've always liked Michael Keaton. I'm just, I just like Michael Keaton, but Michael I just Keaton. think that Christian Bale's the better It's more Batman. Yeah, well, tomato, tomato. You don't like Val Kilmer? I like Val Kilmer in other oh. movies. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I know, Val, I know. But not no, Val Kilmer. But both of those, uh, God, Val, what's his name? Uh, Joel, Kilmer, Schumacher, Joel Schumacher yeah, did yeah. both of the... The Batman Forever and Batman and Robin. Oh, yeah. Dude, have you watched Batman and Robin in the last, like, ten years? No, I haven't. Well, it is so. worth... Dude, we should get drunk one night and watch Batman and Robin. Just it chew is it up. so fucking funny. I bet. I just think... It is, is hilarious. It Chris is Robin? No, it's... Uh, what's his name? Uh, <sighs> ah, shit. It's on the tip of my tongue. People are screaming at the radio right now. Yeah, probably so. Yeah. It'll, it'll <laughs> pop into my head... Later, but anyway, screen. let's get off of Batman. Yeah, all right. Are We're you? Cut that are you what, so, oh, are you anything town, else to town, say about town. the town? No, 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 no. All right. We're, I was going to cut to, because, uh, I, you know, I've got some more of my favorites here. All right. Well, I'm going to go with my next one, which is, which you scoffed at. And so I need to explain, because I think you haven't seen Desperado in a while. I have so, seen Desperado, and I, I mean, it's just one of those movies no. from the so, 90s. And no, 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 no. You're just going to the whole no. scene. No. From? No. No. So, this is the scene. Was it no? Was it no? It was no. Okay. <laughs> there's yeah. a couple of, there's a bunch of shootouts. The movie's full of yeah, shootouts. Full but, of the one in the bar. Danny Trejo, awesome, by the way. Yeah. It starts off with Quentin Tarantino mm. telling the joke. About pissing in the bar, doing the bet. Pissing all over it's, the bartender, yep. yeah. It's a great joke. It immediately goes to... Uh, it, it's... They built up this whole mythos, which, by the way, I'm... I'm I, I might start with, with Desperado. I, I'm getting ready to do a series on the main channel mm -hmm. where... I don't know if I'm going to do 10. I don't know how many I'm going to do. I have a list of 10. I don't know if I'm going to do all 10. I have to say real quick, Desperado, is it El... Mariachi. El Mariachi is the Mariachi. first one. First Desperado is the sequel, so, yeah. and uh, Antonio Banderas replaces the main actor. The main actor for, in that one, but, but still. Um, what it, what I was gonna do is this series where I sit and I evaluate. I kind of let them play through, but I eva on, on YouTube I evaluate the best movie intros. Desperado's got one, one of my favorites. It's with Steve Buscemi yeah. telling the story and establishing the like mythos of the desperado <laughs> of, of the yeah. mariachi that he has the guitar case full of guns so everyone's like on edge they're in this seedy bar where they're like they're like it's so the bar is so funny oh, like because yeah. those like ladies are Cheats bitching Marina. yeah well those ladies yeah those ladies <laughs> are bitching like it tastes your beer tastes like piss he's like we know oh, we because we piss, piss in it, it. Yeah. <laughs> and then this guy comes in and they're like getting all nervous he opens it up and they see that it's a guitar and everybody relaxes. Yeah, until it's and then, then that opens. that hatch starts to like yeah. ease up. It's loaded with fucking hits. guns. Yeah. And then the shootout. So it the reason I like it is because yes, it's a crazy shootout, but as you remember, it's this like circular bar. There's like the bar back is in the middle, the bar goes around, 
He's on top he's of all the bar. Over the place in there, that bar. he's jumping off on of the it, side and then it. like it wraps up with uh, there's bodies all over the floor. <laughs> His dancing shooting style. Bah, bah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bah, bah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, <laughs> not realistic at all to be able to like hammer yeah. bullets, but it, it's still Robert Rodriguez just knows what looks cool on screen. Definitely cool looking. And then it ends up there's bodies all over the floor. And there's one guy left, and they both keep grabbing discarded guns <laughs> and just to pull click, the trigger, yeah. just trying to get one. It's, uh, it's got it's just got so many little fun elements to it, and like that's one of my big things on movies. You know, Tombstone's not a fun movie. Saving Private Ryan, not a fun movie, <laughs> which is fine. But when I Serious. when I latch on to like when I find one that is it's just overly entertaining and fun. So you would just throw this on in the background if there was a. Oh, I used to do it all the time yeah, in college. I would put Desperado oh, on. Jesus. The soundtrack's great. The opening, I can sit and watch. Uh, Salma Hayek's yeah, butt well, ass naked in it in the middle. Hey, we're of going it. to shootouts. We're not doing. I'm just girls. saying. Now I'm getting into why I like the rest of the movie. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And there's more epic shootouts, but that one is like really just fun and perfect. I mean, Salma Hayek, what? Dust till dawn, uh, you know. Yeah. Oh, I won't go there. I'm not going to go there. That wasn't. Anyway. I've I've discussed it before. Great. I, I really like the uh, opening to the movie. The whole vampire thing later on just blows your mind. If you haven't really seen the movie, it's on Netflix right now. The Des- or, um, from dust till dawn. From dust till dawn. I was, did not know that. I'll yep. have to look into that one. All right. So, Desperado. I'm going to throw this one up. I couldn't not put this on there. John yeah. Wick. So many shootouts. So many people That's a murdered. tricky thing. So is... many bullets spent. Shell casing. Shotgun rounds. I mean... That's a tricky thing. Is what... Just like Desperado. Just, what shootout I really pick? love the club scene. At the Red Circle. It's a great scene. Him kind of creeping downstairs. And they're in the pool. And how quick it escalates. I... I from the beginning to the end. When he's finally meeting up with one of the main bodyguards. And they're fighting on the top floor. It's just a great, great scene. The whole thing put together very well. Love the shootout, love the gunplay. Keanu Reeves did a great job on practicing and getting up to his guns with Glock and shotguns he was using. I don't know if you watched any of the YouTube channels that he was on where he was uh, staging on what he was doing. Yeah, he was doing like his three gun. Three gun. Yeah. Man, phenomenal. Great shooter. Well, and unlike the two above it, unlike Hard Boiled and Desperado, which are not realistic at all. John Loading. Wick reloading. <laughs> do, well, not just reloading. John Wick is fun, just like those two. Yet it makes the reloading and the tactical element of it part of the entertainment. The whole movie like, <laughs> put together so well. Yeah, just, you know, but you know what I mean. Like yeah. the, they don't let the reloading hamper things and break the action. Like there's it's a scene. Just speed keeps going. There's a scene yeah. where he shoots at a guy and clicks because he wasn't counting. And he has to reload while the guy's like, before the guy like comes to and get a bullet in him. And they make the reloading part of the fun yeah. of it without it killing it. Uh, Tate Fletcher is a big like actor. He's in a bunch of shit. I, I drink his coffee. Caveman coffee. Good coffee. <laughs> he, that, he's, a, he's a stunt guy, actor. He's in a bunch of shit. But he's the guy with the big beard and the twisty mustache. Yeah. And he just... John Wick gets a hold of that beard, <laughs> slams his head down, and just Bullets. pops one in his yeah. in his skull. There's oh. so many. I mean, it just doesn't. Every every not every bullet, but every frame, you know, every every shot of the camera catches something exciting and interesting. The whole movie is like from where yeah. it starts. It's just like, all right, here's the roller coaster, hill, 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 and then it's just downhill like crazy. Just a full frontal of fun. Nothing but bullets. Gasoline and fire. I feel like that one ended <laughs> where he gets like thrown off the balcony and he lands. Oh, the scene didn't end there, but I feel like that was maybe where the shootout like stops. snapped to a close. I'm trying just trying to remember like where it actually ended. Probably ends. killed about thirty people from that point on, but yeah. Yeah, I saw something <laughs> once that was really cool. It was like a graphic design thing that had these it was these different panels. Like it would be a red and a purple one, but it would show like it would just be like a row of guns and different types of guns and it would signify the number of kills with each weapon. 
So like awesome. in each scene, yeah. so it was like the church, HK and they had yeah. Stuff, so yeah. some of them were really full and some of them not, but it was a really cool like design thing that really just showed you how high the body count was. Speaking of body count, one that I kind of wanted to put in there, but I already had my two fun ones in there, and it's really not that good of a shootout. I just love it. Is uh, Commando. Commando. <laughs> is, uh, the body count on that <laughs> is like eighty something. It might yeah. be like hundred and twenty. Yeah. It's so high. I don't think Schwarzenegger catches a bullet. <laughs> He's got no shirt on, <laughs> and it's, it's just Schwarzenegger, the Terminator. Yeah, he yeah. kills a guy. He, he kills a guy throwing a saw, loose saw blade at him, <laughs> a circular saw uh, blade. It's, uh, it's I love one. that one, but it's not. It does not deserve to be on the list. That's kind of like my three thousand miles to Graceland. I really like the shootout scene in that. Yeah, I like the movie a lot too. Great shootout scene, just full on their Elvis suits. Mm-hmm. People still gambling as the bullets are going on. I mean, it's awesome. But yeah, yeah didn't put it up on my list. Yeah, no, that is a good one. There's a bunch of movies out there that I could have put up, but some of my top favorites, I mean, it's kind of hard to pull. Yeah. I've got a couple of uh, honorable mentions we can maybe get into if we have time. But my second to last pick before we have to do elimination is Taxi Driver. I feel like I should have put this one up sooner. So... This is one of the milder ones on the list in terms of like the actual body count, what occurs, uh, but it's one of the bloodiest and just more intense ones and more real, not realistic, but it just feels like a real thing that's happening. Um, And so what you get with this one is you get all this buildup. It's a great movie, great performances. You're struggling with this character the whole time who basically decides he's going to assassinate a presidential candidate <laughs> and he bails on it. Yeah, decides and not then to. Immediately goes. Deflects to the prostitute. To, the, to save this girl in this <laughs> yeah. brothel. And you get. <clears throat> he shoots Harvey Keitel's character in the gut. And the, so I, I'll run through this whole thing because I really, really lo- love this movie. This is, this is one of the movies where. I really started to fall in love with filmmaking. So I always loved movies as a kid. I just, like I said, you know, there's movies like The Matrix that I would just watch over and over again. But I I rented Taxi Driver. I think it was on VHS because I don't think, like, DVDs were a thing, but all these older movies had not been, like, re-released on DVD yet. So I believe I had it on VHS. I still have a lot of these on VHS. <laughs> That's crazy to say. Yeah, that, I don't know where I don't know where any of my you know, VHS town are. I don't, but there's yeah. a, there's a few of them that I you know, John Wick didn't come out, but but the endings because I didn't know anything about it. I just knew it was Martin Scorsese and Robert De Niro. That's all I knew, and I knew it was a classic Robert De Niro movie. I liked Robert De Niro. I wanted to just I, I was consuming a bunch of Robert De Niro yeah. movies at the time, and uh, it just it cuts to. This the, the the taxi pulls up in front of this place. He shoots Harvey Keitel, yeah. and the first shot when with the taxi's pulling up in front of the building, the uh, whole film gets desaturated from the rest of the movie, and they had to do that because there was so much blood in this scene. They wouldn't give him an R rating. Oh wow! And so they literally desaturated it, and it was before it was before. People bought movies on VHS, and and before they really valued archiving. So what was the rating going to be on it, like NC seventeen or whatever, type, or X, or whatever, or whatever they back then. whatever they called it at the time, and it wouldn't have played in a bunch of theaters. It, it just wouldn't have. They could have put it out, but yeah. it wouldn't have played in many theaters. Not many people would have seen it. And they, you know, with the investment, the studio can't let you yeah. do that. You just can't do it. So, but the problem is they didn't preserve it. There wasn't a, a tradition of archiving film at that time like there is now and they didn't preserve the original cut and so it's lost forever oh, wow. you'll never see like i've got you saw this I earlier saw picture. i was gonna bring that up earlier when you had it. i've got it right this there. illustration i need to hang it up under my lebowski uh but i've got this uh, uh illustration from taxi driver and the saw. walls are just painted in yeah. blood but it, it looks like mud in the movie it's very very dark but in the the way they shot it everything's just bright red um but after he shoots, I'm going to geek out on this, after he shoots Harvey Keitel in the stomach, he goes to the next stoop, because there's a couple doors down, and he just sits there for a minute. Yeah. He likes, there's nobody around, it's the middle of the <laughs> night. He sits there, and from what I understand, he researched 
people that do that, that like do like random killings, and that's something that they do, or that they at least did at the time, <laughs> was they'll they'll stay. Steps from they'll the fight kind out. of they'll kind of like yeah, they don't just run off. They'll like kind of like they're so amped up. Kinda they'll lingering. sort of like stay in the area for a second. Wow. And he does that, and then he goes in, and you know the the guy that takes your money that he's already met just blows his Which, fucking hand yeah. off. Just, and then there's a lot of special effects in it, yeah. too. It's a famous, uh, very, I cannot remember his name, very, very famous special effects guy. He actually only had, the the guy actually has three fingers. The, the guy that he shot in the hand? No, 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 the, the special oh, effects special guy. special effects right. Yeah, he's got three fingers. Um, side note, but he's, he's, he's famous. You can look him up. I just can't remember his name. Had to throw his touch with but, him. But, you know, then, then De Niro or Travis Bickle gets shot in the neck, and they, like, put, you know, it was makeup, they made a wound, covered it, and had, like, filament, and they pulled it out, and that's the, like, bullet hole in the neck, and it's blood spraying everywhere, and, so go, you know, he goes up the stairs, kills another guy, um, goes all the way in, and he finally, like, saves the girl, and it's just blood everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. So it's not, it almost didn't make the list, because it's not quite a shootout, but it is. It, it squeaks in under the definition of a shootout, and it's so iconic and it's such a important element of that movie and such an important element of like film that that's why I, I had to put it on here and always I'll kill you I'll kill you as he's running up the steps for some reason it always stuck well yeah that's the, it was the guy yeah. that was coming I'll after you, him I'll kill you it's just, yeah it's just always stuck with me the way he said that as he's running up the stairs because that's the guy him. that yeah. he shot his hand off yeah yeah that's just crazy how that goes but yeah the little things that make you remember I've got to throw this up there I love this yep one of my favorites Weight of the gun. I don't know if you can see that. Weight of the gun. Where's, where's that shadow coming from? Probably. I think it's the camera. We'll, we'll remedy it. Okay. Weight of the gun. Reloading all of the fight scenes at the, at the very end. By the way, this, the where they did the last fight scene, or at least at the brothel, was in um, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. The final scene in that movie... Is they, it the same place? It's the same place. No shit. They filmed the same place that they did this, and then their names were Longbow and Parker, which are the actual real characters of Sundance and Butch Cassidy. I did not know yeah, that. Yeah, so <clears throat> at the very beginning they talk about their names. But anyway, the uh, the fight scene, the, the whole movie was choreographed with gunplay. They did reloading, firing everything, three point, or two, I think it was a single harness they were using, Ryan Felipe 870 shotgun. The way they ran through the hotel at the end of it, it was just beautiful. I love the way they start in. They go in with the Galil, shooting through walls. You've got a mass amount of blood in the room with Julia Lewis laying there. It's delivering just, a baby. <laughs> delivering a baby in the middle of it. Trying to use somebody as a hostage, the doctor. I mean, it was just the way it played out from when the doctor was in there and then you had the two henchmen to where... Ryan Felipe and Benicio del Toro take basically the same thing where he's holding the doctor. He's like, let's, you know, it's it's time to get this going. They're coming. And they said she's had enough. I just, that's a great scene. I really like that. Especially not giving Benicio del Toro a lot of lines throughout the whole movie. And then yeah, he's quiet. He's very quiet. And I, from what I understand, I think he actually suggested that to the director because he was just one of the, like more methodical, thoughtful to his process on everything. So he, he suggested hardly any dialogue for his character and I guess they ran with it because it was great. Well it's funny you mentioned the Butch Cassidy thing because I remember like when I first saw this movie that I, it was like a modern western. Yeah. Like you could easily replace the cars and stuff with horses. Horses. You know, when kidnap. they kidnap her originally oh, yeah. like a lot of the way they do stuff like it, it, it's, it just feels very much like a western and they do have a little bit of westerny music there's the standoff stuff, yeah. the location at the end. There are some definite nods, but it's written like a western. And then the I love James Caan. Yeah. And then you get all those like greaseball guys at the <laughs> end wearing the like members only jackets, the old the monster old guys monster that are guys. just getting chewed to up pieces. with that shotgun. Yeah. 870 shotgun. A shotgun where it shoots the guy like in the crotch region where he comes yeah. around the corner. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> <done. laughs> Like that is insane. Well, then uh, the 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 uh, not well the fountain. The fountain. When he the jumps bottles. in that fountain. Yeah. Ah! And then he's pulling the bottle out. The sponsors. So there was actually labels on those bottles. 
when they first did the movie. Yeah, there were labels. They were like, yeah, we want to sponsor you know, we need a sponsor for you guys. We'll put your beer or your bottle in our movie picture. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. When they saw the scene, they're like, well, we didn't know it was going to be used as a weapon. So <laughs> they had to pull the labels off the bottles. Well, the um, th- that's a perfect example of, like, I, one of the things that has stuck with me is uh, Quentin Tarantino did an interview at one point where he was talking about how he likes to write. Yeah. And he was describing, he you know, his fucking his process, mannerisms yeah. and everything. But he was talking about how he's like, you got a guy, he's got a suitcase full of money, and he's running, and he's running, and he's shooting from the cops, and he's running, and he's describing this whole thing. He's like, and he finally sees a car, and he runs, and he gets into it, and he pulls the, the driver out, and he gets in there, and the, the cops are coming, and he's shooting, and he gets in, and it's a stick, and he doesn't <laughs> drive a stick. Yeah. And, and it's that kind of thing about writing that stuck with me, and the well is such a great moment of that because you've got this massive shootout. He runs, yeah. he jumps, he dives into this. I keep calling it a well. Jumps into this fountain, <laughs> fountain. and there's a pause and just <laughs> screams. screams. <laughs> oh, and then you just see there was so oh, much glass. Up. Yeah. You just do oh. not expect that to come, and it completely changes the direction of what's yes. going on. It takes him out of commission. Yeah, you know um, that great. was the beginning of the the downfall of that scene. Which is, one thing I think a lot of people don't know or appreciate is. Uh, Christopher McQuarrie, I think it's how you say his name, is the director, mm-hmm. writer-director. He's done the last two Mission Impossible movies, and they're pretty brilliant. Like, they're appreciated, like, especially this last one's been really appreciated. I'll be honest, I haven't seen either one of the last right. ones. Right. It's just kind of one of those chains that keep going. I know. Mission Impossible 28, let's well, that's get this why going. I'm, that's like, why I'm telling you. It's rolling they, out in the wheelchair. They're well-reviewed. But I think as time goes on, people are going to appreciate those even more because they're going to see how really well crafted they are. And he's the creator behind sort of orc, like the set pieces and the the action sequences are really smartly put together. Like it's not just crazy action; like they're really, really well put together. So I'd recommend checking them out. Um, and just I would say there's probably some people listening. Just the last two. The what is it? Ghost Proto. Uh, Ghost Protocol and Rogue Nation. No. No. Rogue Nation and uh, I can't remember. The last two. The two most recent mm-hmm. ones. The last one has been called Fallout. That came out in 2018. And then the other ones, I think, two or three years older. Um, and he did both of those. So I've really, really liked the last three. I haven't wa- I mean, I watched the first one, watched the second one. But I was like, all right, we. Have three, I don't know, man. Four, dude, five. Dude, three, four, or is it four, five, and six? Four, five, four, and six. four, five, and six are my favorites. Really? Yeah. So I have. I'm gonna have to like just yeah. muscle through. Yeah, man. That's bad. So five and six are the ones that McCory did. So anyway, um, that's it. So we got. We each have one more. Yeah. I gotta pull one of yours out. So what do we got? We got the, the town. town. Open Range, Saving Private Ryan, John Wick, Damn. Way of the Gun. Damn, dude. And, you know, looking at it, I say I had a, my list was way longer than this. I know. <laughs> I mean, like, crazy longer. And I just had to, like, really cut But you've got your top tight. one. What's your, do you have a bottom one? A, my bottom one? Man. Um, of yours. Yeah, I know. It's just, so town open range saving private ryan which one are we talking about in the town is the one where they're in the nun oh you, you like the nun shootout which one are you i'm no. talking about the yin shootout the shootout when yeah you're out. right you're right yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. man that's tough that. it's a tough no it's a tough sale it's a tough pull i mean if you're gonna i can't say saving private ryan that one's John Wick's in there. You're going to pull Way of the Guns range. in there. Open Range. I think i got to go with Open Range. It's just, I mean, I really like Open Range. The I do, too. The is insane. But it's not better than The Town. It's, oh, man. Is it? I don't, yeah. I have a hard time, because when I judge a movie, I'm judging the whole thing. But still, just the shootout-wise, I don't know. I would, if you're going to pull one, I'll leave it to you. Because I know which one I'm going to pull on yours. You probably know which one I'm going to pull on yours. It's not going to be Tombstone. Oh yeah, that's the first. That's the first one I'm gonna pull. Is uh, it? No, Desperado. Okay. No, dude, you can't pull Desperado. You, I'm not what? Gonna... You're not gonna allow me to pull Desperado? <laughs> so over. Well, I'm I gonna take open was... range. You're gonna take open range. Yeah. So why do you want to pull Desperado? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not gonna pull enough. Desperado actually. Well, which what would be your other pick? 
Yeah, because I'm looking at yours. The Matrix, I'm not pulling that. It's a great scene. You got Hard Boiled, which... And Taxi Driver. Taxi Driver, I mean, it's a shootout, but it's not like... What I consider a shootout, a shootout. You know, you got a bunch yeah. of people firing back, hiding behind cover. So I'm going to pull your taxi driver. All right. I knew you were going to do that, by the way, the one that you just pulled yeah. up. Because I have that on my list. The whole movie is a... Uh, well, well, you get, you're, you're taking my... You're stealing I'm not, my I'm notes. Not, I'm not going to say anything. You're stealing my notes. Let I'm me not, get yours on here. So, am I writing it? Am I, yeah. Let me write this down. Write it where people can read it. So while oh, yeah, he's I'm writing gonna do, I'm going to do down, my serial killer handwriting. Yeah. So while he's writing that, I said write it so you can read it. I don't think anybody can read this one. Uh, my pick, my top pick is actually Lone Survivor. Now, this is maybe, I like the movie. I mean, I, I really do like the movie. But it's maybe my least favorite movie out of all the ones I've talked about. However, almost two-thirds of this movie is a shootout. And is a great shootout. And I would call the shootout from when they're first about to be engaged. Oh, God. So, 20 about, minutes into about the movie. About time to punch that clock. Yep. I mean, from that point. Right as they're, no, they're being followed and they're, they're about yeah. to be engaged. All the way up until where Mark Wahlberg is a lone survivor, basically. Like, after the helicopter goes down, after Ben Foster's gone, after everybody's gone, and, and he's... After they've jumped down the hill, all of that never stops. That is one continuous yeah. engagement without a break, basically. So I would, because that is all one shootout, that's why that's my number one pick. Yeah, that's a great one. And by it's, the way. Would, and plus, would you it's, agree? Uh, when I say accurate to yes. the, the story, Marcus Control, his, his story is actually even crazier than what they put in the movie. I mean, well, accurate to story, read, but just also tactically through, accurate. Yeah, tactically accurate. You know, the, what he went through that whole, the whole journey that he had. Once a journey, that terrible, terrible event. Um, they didn't put a lot of stuff in the movie because they didn't think it was going to be believable that some person could put their body through that much pain. Yeah, and that much. It was harm. hard to believe. Like, it's insane on what they did. What's, it's hard to believe what was in the movie. Yeah. I mean, I mean jumping over cliffs, falling over 30, 40 foot, ugh. crunching bones. Jesus. You're jumping from rock. You're falling from rock to rock. So, Yeah, yeah. if you have not great seen that movie. one, it, it is a great movie. I don't mean to say I don't out. like it. I just like, you know, I like Tombstone more. I just enjoy that movie more. Yeah. But the Lone Survivor shootout is just so it's incredible. Intense. The whole movie's intense, yeah. you know. So... Love it, by the way. Yep. And then I put up Heat. One of my favorites, Heat. Yeah. I'll go on about it. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. So Heat. <clears throat> the the I'll say Kilmer. I'll say before you go on about it, the, my my viewers are tired of hearing me talk about Heat. Heat, they are. So really? you you oh talk about God. it. They're tired of hearing me talk about it. What? How can you be? Hurt? All right, look. All right, if you really, just the whole the way the way they shot that last scene from the bank. I mean, it's intense. The music. From them, you know, full suits going in like they're some business guys with fully automatic rifles ready to rock. They come out in two, well, in 2002, Val Kilmer was, you know, happy that the Marines took the fire and flee scene they have when they're, they're bailing from car to car when they're deep in the firefight. And it's cover fire, retreat, cover fire, retreat. Yeah. That was brought up in like... They shown. use it. They use it. They showed it as a teaching mechanism from how they did that scene. And his his scene where he goes down after he's shooting back from front to back from yeah. six to twelve in between two cars. He ducks down. Magazine God, change. Dude. That's like perfect. That whole thing. That's a proper magazine change for a rifle. So uh, you, that whole scene from them to suppression fire to get into the the supermarket. The supermarket scene. The actual, you know, that's based off of a character, a police officer, and a bank robber. There's two scenes in that. Well, yeah, because this movie's fictional, but all the stuff that happens is based, based off, of off a lot of older, like much yes. older stuff, but it's still stuff that happens. So the guy that actually, in the movie with De Niro and Pacino, where they meet, and they're at a restaurant, and they're talking to each other, the actual police officer did run into who would be Robert De Niro, at a grocery store, and they got, do you want to go 
have a cup of coffee and they actually went and talked. And the lines where they're talking about there could be issues where if I see you, you know, I'm going to, I would hate to have to shoot you. you. I'm going to have to put you down. And they said, there's a flip side of that coin. The actual guys said that to each other. Like, damn, it's, it's insane. Well, like the, the scene in the department, just for a second from the shootout, the scene where they're, uh, one of the last like vaults they were trying to break into at night, mm. they were doing the sting in the truck and the one guy, the, the SWAT guy sits down Barely bumps in the butt of his gun come on, come on. and that shut it down. That was real, but they were like in the... They were like in the business next door to the place that they were robbing, yeah. and a guy like got up to take a piss or something, and it it, it, oh. it they made a thud and they they, they backed out and they tut. bailed. But it's the same guy you're talking yeah. about. I don't know their I can't remember their names. It starts with but, a, oh, and I want to say all that occurred like in the 30s or 40s or something. Older, it was an older, older yeah. uh, crime spree. But he, he ended up bid fight at the supermarket though when De Niro's character is getting away. He actually in real life got shot. But the um, <laughs> The, it's so it's shot so well because you've got the scenes where you can, where Val Kilmer's doing like you described where he's shooting from from you know twelve to six twelve to six but the camera's back so you can see him in one yeah. motion but then there's other times where the camera's over the shoulder and you can see the it shells takes, shooting yeah. out and then the the audio they recorded so it phenomenal they recorded it on set so they didn't go back and add machine yeah. gun fire. They recorded it, so you got all the blanks sound too, of the, the blanks exploding off the glass of the off buildings. The buildings, echoes, and just the bah, 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 bah. because Michael Mann's a genius with that shit, yeah, that man. He knew to film it that way, and it's it's uh, a masterpiece. The movie is great. The shootout is an absolute masterpiece. I usually stop if I see that it's on, or if I like flipping channels and I see it, I'll turn on. It doesn't matter where it's at, just to watch it. The one of my favorite scenes of that shootout is when Val Kilmer is exiting the bank. They're all like patting each other on the back, hitting you on the shoulder. We got away with it. And he just barely catches just silhouettes of the two guys. And does not and hesitate. does not hesitate. Just unleashes hell in the Damn. streets. Just bringing hate. Damn. Just bringing hate. Oh, God. All right. So great. It's very great. Would you agree... Heat is the number one pick on the list. I have would agree. I I've said it a bunch of times. I'm like, I love. I've said it a bunch of times. It's the, the best the, shootout of all time. So before we get into to ranking them, let's go ahead and just. Are there's, we peel there's, them there's off? no contest. Let's peel them all off. But heat. Well, we all gotta right. peel heat off, and, and let's keep, put them down here so we can evaluate where they go, and we will go ahead. Man, Normally I'm, we would kind of work our way to establishing the number one, but I think it's indisputable. Now what we can do. What's what's one that you think kind of belongs in the in the middle? Mm. Would you say maybe John Wick? Not in not square in the middle, but just somewhere in the middle. I would I would give Wick or Private Ryan. I mean, it's just so hard. I tell you what, I I'm gonna have to say I really like way the guns fight shootout for either the top two to three. Well, yeah, I don't want to get into those. I want to figure out what, what's kind of we're in just the middle. Going down the middle. Hmm. I don't know, John Wick's gonna be up there, I think. John Wick is up there. It's, I mean, the whole movie's basically a shootout, but it's justifiable cause. You know, they killed his dog. Let's see. Took his car. Um, and we can move him around. Let's just put, let's put John Wick up, and, and up figure there. out what goes above or what goes below John Wick. That's a hard. So, that's a hard sell. Now I'm gonna say, just since it's Keanu Reeves, I would say John Wick goes above the Matrix. Yeah, I like John Wick over The Matrix, to be honest. Yeah, I, I don't disagree. The Matrix had a good shootout scene. So I'm just scene. spacing them out so we can figure... Cause, hang, let me get it a little bit off the board. Um, um, I, you know... What goes, that, what goes above John Wick? I would say... Either Way of the Gun, Lone Survivor. I would agree with Lone Survivor. It's my number one pick. Yeah. Does... I. Do you think Way of the Gun goes above it? Man. I don't know. I think Lone Survivor's going, got uh, Way of the Gun. I think solid. It's a solid. I think Lone Survivor's got Way of the Gun outweighed. Mm. The town. The town is so similar to Heat. It it's is. certainly it's inspired so by Heat. I'm going to have to put... Way of the gun, 
Well, I'm going to have to put the town underneath Lone Survivor. Above John Wick? I think it goes either right above or right below. I don't know. I kind of want to put it below. Heat Lone Survivor. I kind of want to put the town right below John Wick. Uh, We'll do this. And above the Matrix. I will allow. The Matrix really should be lower on that list. Yeah, maybe. It's it's just below these two right now. So we got Heat Lone Survivor. Yeah, this isn't like placement. This is just relative to the other ones. I'm going to go back to the way of the gun. I really like that fight scene. Where does it go? I'm going to put it underneath. I'm going to put it underneath the town. Definitely. Oh, you think? Yeah. I under think. John Wick? Under under the town. I really like it. A, I, I don't know. It's just hard because Lone Survivor is such a good one. Is anything, what, what, we, have is anything we have here above we, John two, Wick? Four. Is anything above John Wick? This is our top Wick? ten. This is a tough top ten. Yeah. This is a really tough top ten. Because yeah, I actually is. want to remove Way of the Gun. These, I think, are going to be going up. Up. All of them. Those those could but be our look, top five. But look at what five. we got on the floor. Is any are, are any of these above John Wick? I'm gonna have to say Tombstone is a great shootout scene, for what it is for that scene, but it's not a very long shootout yeah. scene. Yeah, I'm I'm leaning towards and then, Saving Private Ryan going above John Wick. That's a great. That's just such a great. And I would say, this is our top three. That I did not expect. Now, it, this isn't final, but I would not have expected Saving Private Ryan to be up there. But comparing it, man, is it got, it's got so much going on. A lot. John Wick is, it's tough to have John Wick on four. The Town, Way of the Gun, The Matrix. We have Tombstone, Hard Boiled, and Desperado. Man, I gotta, I gotta say... I think this is our top ones here, man. Yeah, just bring them back up. The Matrix. Now the question is... No, wait the, a minute, wait a minute. We got Desperado and the Matrix. Yeah. And the, De- Desperado, as, far, as far as the shooting scene goes, I will give it this. Yeah, I would say... I would yeah. put it over the top of the Matrix. Yeah, I, I would too. It's got more... Um, there's more things going on in it. The Matrix is really just like a running gun. Yeah. Which is what's keeping it as low as it is. It, I can actually move the Matrix up. I think you're right. And then we're going to go hard-boiled over that. Even though we're not like, I mean, it's like you said, I, I think, it's a I think you're right. I, we're, we're in agreement. I, I think Tombstone at the bottom. And Tombstone and, but, at the but bottom. But it's at the bottom of a top ten list. Man, we're in solid agreement. And I will say, you whooped my ass on it. Because you got one, three, four, five, six. Is your your five? I had this on there, but I thought it was going to be something it. that was. Yeah, I know I didn't. And then I've got number two. It's a great. That's a great. Seven, one. eight, nine, ten. There's a few more movies on the list that I had that maybe. So the the final count because uh, most people are listening and they can't see yeah. us, and then for whatever reason, because the way I got it set up, you can't see the bottom two. We got ten, Tombstone, nine, Hard Boiled, eight, The Matrix, seven, Desperado. Six, Way of the Gun. Five, The Town. Four, John Wick, The Red Circle Shootout. Three, Saving Private Ryan. The last quarter of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> Lone and Survivor. And again, these are, these are two. Like, Heat is two. long. So then two, Lone Survivor, and number one is Heat. Lone Survivor and Saving Private Ryan are both like 30 minutes a movie. At least. Lone Survivor might be longer. Uh, and Heat is long compared to all the others. Look at that. All of these, really, from Wave the Gun up, these are all really Very long, long shootouts. Um, and it works. It works. In fact, they, the, the shortest one is, is Tombstone. Tombstone is the quickest gunfight scene probably on that list. Yeah. Maybe two But two it still minutes. squeaks, <laughs> it it squeaks, still squeaks into good, onto the list. I'm fight. happy with that list. I think that, is a good, I think that is a good list. What do you think? I'm in. I'm, I really like the list that we've done. Like I said, uh, I could bring up the runner-ups later on, but well, what do you do? You got yeah, any in I, mind? I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna bring them out now. There, there shouldn't be. I shouldn't bring because it's gonna be a. Because I could put well, some. Well, one of one of mine because because it's a, it's a shame. Uh, open range had to get taken off. 
but uh, uh, the Untouchables was one of mine yeah. on the uh, stairwell. Kevin, Kevin Co- another yeah. Kevin Costner. Yep. But uh, like the a, stairwell. Yeah. And it's all slow mo, but there's all I this like, these elements happening at once. It just didn't. It didn't top. You know, the bottom pick from me ended up being Tombstone. It doesn't top Tombstone. See, I had three thousand miles to Graceland because I like two Kevin, another Kevin another Costner, another Kevin Costner, and movie. Kurt, and Kurt, Kurt Russell. Russell, one of my favorites. He just both scenes: the shootout in the casino and the shootout at the very end when he tells the kid, you know, basically get out, and he just rains hell down with a right or I think that's a M sixty or M ninety machine gun, blowing up cars, tanks. I just realized other? though, none of my like my favorite yeah. action movies made it into the list. Die Hard really didn't have a shootout that there, stood out I mean, to me for this list. Single action shootouts. These are that's like a person maybe shooting it out a little bit with Terminator Two didn't really have a shootout. Terminator. Shootout. Yeah. I mean there's some shooting, but it's not a shootout. It's not a shootout. Yeah. Like what I consider a shootout. Or a yeah. shootout. Yeah. Yeah. Well, right on. I think that's a solid list, my man. I mean, you had Platoon as well, but, I, you know, I just... Yeah, but that's like, that's another reason uh, I think um, uh, Black Hawk Down didn't like make it in, because it's warfare. Platoon, it's warfare, the very end of Platoon, where they're hitting the, yeah. the bunkers all the way down there, running through the brush, the jungle rush. It's, and... it's, that's just all-out warfare, whereas even like Lone Survivor, yes, it's soldiers, but that is a shootout. Mm-hmm. That is two small groups shooting back and forth at each other. It's there's a, it's a different dynamic yeah. on screen, and it plays out well. I can hear people fucking. It's still a shootout. Yeah, yeah, hot fuzz. I can e- yeah, hot fuzz. <laughs> but it just doesn't it, yeah, stand diff- out. Different to me. type of shootout. I mean, there's me. so many great ones. Like yeah, there's yeah. so many I thought of. Um, I probably, that are yeah. that I are had a huge list, and I just yeah. I racked my brain for over five days trying to like cut them down. No, to, I think this is a solid list. If you're listening on YouTube, what you're watching on YouTube, <laughs> if you watch me slide he out of the frame radio. <laughs> on YouTube, uh, by the way, if you're if you're listening and you're not watching, uh, you might want to check it out. You on definitely YouTube. don't want to watch the Jaws video at all. Don't, you yeah, don't, you yeah, don't. definitely don't click on that. Don't link. click on that one. That's a bad link. And then uh, if you are uh, just listening and you never watched, this would be a great episode to watch because I should have mentioned it up front. But Joe and I are both completely decked out in full tactical gear. Uh, so there's a reason to watch that. Which one? The Jaws? No, <laughs> us right now in all this tactical gear we're sitting here yeah. in. Yeah. Um, well, I could have brought a bunch of guns over and we could have just set them up so we could see them. Yeah, well, that's not what this That's not what we're about. doing here. Um, I think that's it, man. You did good. Yeah. You handled the weather like a champ. This time around? Yeah, yeah, well, I didn't drink a bottle. So the funny thing about the, the I don't know if you remember. I, I know you don't remember. You know what? I had I had painstakingly to go back and watch. I watched probably 20 minutes of the video, and I was like, I'm embarrassed. Turn it off. <laughs> Click. <laughs> did you, How could this happen? Did you see? What when, did they let me do? <laughs> did you see, though, when you, like. What's bad about Jaws is I know so much about Jaws. Oh, it's insane. Once so, you get to a certain point, I mean, we watched, we sat and watched it, and, I, you know, I'm sitting there. With another person, we're all ha- hanging out and telling them all about the movie. So the really funny thing about that video ah. is, so this is when the studio, the bar there uh, that you can see behind us, oh. was in the other room Still. through the barn door. So we were there. However, we watched the movie right here. <laughs> and Joe was drinking W.L. Weller, which is really great. Um, great bourbon, if you uh, get a chance, it's for, especially for the price. It's good stuff. It's my brand. Um, it's all a brand. Joe was loaded on it, and Joe loves Jaws. We sat here for two and a half hours and watched Jaws, which is so much fun. But he continued to drink this Weller the whole time and talked about all the fun facts and stuff he knows about Jaws. And the problem was he gassed out. He used everything he had. When we get back there, he could not pull. He didn't even know like Rob Schneider's name. God. But the funniest part, and there's some really funny parts in that thing. I haven't watched it. I've watched it. What you do is you you have an empty bottle of Weller. Probably after, yeah. It's completely empty, and I'm explaining something. We can fast forward to the ride home that I had with the Uber driver. Let's talk about that rating. Well, let me get through this, (laughs) because I'm explaining something to you. You literally do this. I'm, I'm describing it for people that are listening, but I'm doing it, actually. You slowly open 
the bottom of the weller. It's bone dry. Oh, it's completely empty. You're listening to me. You're looking down. You go like this. You take your finger and you point at the, the label. <laughs> you're nodding, listening to me. You put the cap right back on. <laughs> just no. I mean, you're just completely oh, on another planet. Oh. So that's kind of that was that was funny. I like like on this one, I was just <clears> talking <throat> about. Oh, I'm gonna do this new series where I talk about movie intros. Well, that was supposed to be a series that never got anywhere. If you want to watch us get drunk and talk about movies, let me know <laughs> oh, in the comments because maybe we'll start doing that again. If you want us to do that, that's I almost won't be this, a bottle. It wasn't really drunk. Yeah, that's almost had, what we're doing now, but we didn't drink that much. Drink. I mean, I've only had Thank one. You. Tug of uh, whiskey. Two fingers. I had two fingers. Trying to keep it light. Well. The, the last one got rough. I appreciate you coming out. Yeah. I had always had fun. It's been a lot of fun. Always fun. Uh, if you want to support the show, there are links in the description. Patreon, merch shop, Amazon shop. If you're going to buy DVDs anyway, follow that link. You're just buying them on Amazon, but actually, even if you buy a pair of shoes on Amazon, after following that link, it'll actually give a little kickback to the show and help us keep making stuff like this. Buying shoes. Yep. So, uh, do that, and uh, you will hear me on the next one, but not Joe. Buying shoes? What the hell is this? Buying, what are you talking about? Amazon buying shoes? So now I have to explain it. I just, I just right, signed right, off. Right, you, you signed off. All right. All right. I'm signing off. Have a good one, guys. Thank <laughs> you.